blood plasma is saving the lives of people with COVID-19, but there isn't enough of it. That's why scientists have been trying to recreate the antibodies it contains in the lab, and they've done it. They've developed defensive proteins that can successfully fight off coronavirus. The US president was even treated with them. But these antibody drugs aren't in wide use, even though they could make the difference between life and death. All sounds great. We still don't have definitive data, but trials are set to get underway. Like so much in this crisis, it's learning by doing. And it's thanks to some brilliant minds from the world of science. This blood plasma can stop a coronavirus infection in its tracks. The antibodies of recovered patients can be used to treat people with COVID-19. It's already proven effective for patients, including Lutfu Dachi. At the start, I was very sick. My wife sent me here in an ambulance. I spent two days in the normal ward, but then they decided to send me to intensive care. I was just drained. Lutfu's condition became so severe that he was placed on a ventilator. It was then that Dr. Hauber and his team gave him plasma from a recovered patient. The patient received the plasma after his respiratory condition and his lung function deteriorated significantly. Within a day or two, he'd stabilized and we were able to take away the breathing support. To get the plasma, you need blood donors who've already survived COVID-19. Their blood has neutralizing antibodies that can render the coronavirus harmless. The plasma is given to the patient through a transfusion. Then the antibodies within it get to work, fighting the virus before the patient's immune system has produced enough defensive proteins of its own. The plasma clearly did the trick for Lutfu Dachi, but the successes remain isolated cases and the general effectiveness is yet to be proven in studies. However, doctors say plasma therapy is helping the most severely ill patients. Many doctors would like to use plasma more often, ideally giving it to patients in the early stages of the disease when it's likely to work best. But the problem is, there isn't enough of it. We've come to realize that everyone who recovers from coronavirus has a different amount of antibodies in their blood. Only those with a high level can be suitable donors. But can the antibodies be produced without the need for a donor? That's exactly what researchers in Braunschweig are working on. This tube contains an entire gene library, so a collection of genetic material. In our collection, we have 10 billion different genes. That's the entire repertoire of what our body has available to produce antibodies. In this gene library, the scientists found an antibody that works perfectly against SARS-CoV-2. In lab tests, it completely prevented the human cells from being attacked. They were then able to reproduce the antibody based on its genetic blueprint and produce the first dose of their antibody drug. It has major advantages over the plasma therapy because it can be manufactured in large quantities and at a consistent quality. With the right funding, human trials of the team's drug could begin as soon as next month, and the scientists' work can begin to save lives. And let's talk to Stefan Dubel, who featured in that report. We just saw you holding up a tube to the camera. What was in there? Uh, actually, this very small vial contains literally the complete immune reaction of mankind in respect of antibodies. So more than 100 people from all over the globe donated blood, and we extracted from that blood the blueprints to build antibodies against almost everything. So more than 10 billion different blueprints in form of genetic code for antibodies against different diseases are in this vial. And my laboratory has now developed a technology to identify one specific antibody, which binds to SARS-CoV-2, for example, or to other viruses. So this antibody can then 
neutralize the virus and can be used uh, as a drug to fight the disease. And it's a molecule which is made in our own body. So it's not a chemical or not an artificial substance. It's a, a molecule which is identical to the one which is in our body anyway if we get the infection. Can you brief me, briefly let me in on the secret? How, how did you actually pinpoint that out of, how many did you say? 10 billion. <laughs> how, how did you do that? Uh, it's a trick which I co-invented about 30 years ago uh, together with some other people. And um, it's a molecular biology trick where we uh, managed to connect the blueprint, so the genetic information, to the function, which is the proteins, in form of nanoparticles. So we have 10 billion different nanoparticles, which can be then selected by a simple molecular biology experiment um, um, for the binding itself. And when you have the binding of the protein, mm -hmm. it has the genetic information in its backpack. And okay. we can get it back and isolate the bone and get the antibody. So you've managed to produce antibodies, otherwise only found in the blood plasma of COVID survivors. Are they just as good, though? Um, well, that has to be, of course, uh, has to be shown in the clinical studies. But uh, in principle, our antibody uh, is derived from the blood of patients and performed in the blood uh, sorry, and performed in the experiments we did in the preclinical studies. Uh, very, very effective, and in, it neutralized um, the antibody in the lungs, and it 100% uh, protected cell culture um, against infection. So it's very efficient in respect of protecting mm -hmm. against SARS-CoV-2. What about these clinical studies of antibody therapies that show severe side effects, like the overreaction of the immune system? How, how can you prevent that? This is a very important point, and we thought of that uh, since the beginning of the design of our body, of, of our antibody, and we managed actually to um, address this problem by changing the signaling part of the antibody a little bit by molecular biological means, so that we completely avoid the simulation of this uh, overreaction. So, in the clinic, we expect not to see any of these overreactions which are seen in the other antibodies. And, and just tell me briefly, do antibody treatments provide long-term protection against the virus? They provide immediate protection, which is different from uh, the vaccine, but then they only last for about one to three months and have to be repeated, but they can be given repeatedly. Stefan Dübel, thank you very much. Interesting stuff and congratulations on your work. Let's take a look at some of the other corona-related stories making news. Preliminary results from a study show recovering from COVID protects against infection for at least five months. Public Health England tracked 20,000 healthcare workers and found a previous infection provided 83% immunity similar to a vaccine. The World Health Organization is looking at introducing COVID-19 vaccination passports for travellers. Some countries are already trialling them. Critics call the passports discriminatory. And WHO scientists are now in the Chinese city of Wuhan to investigate the origins of the pandemic. The long-delayed trip follows months of diplomatic wrangling. Beijing argues the virus may not have originated in the southwest, as scientists suspect. Over now to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. If you've got a question, here's the email, feedback.english at dw.com. Type expert in the subject line or leave a comment on our YouTube channel. If you get a first vaccine shot made by one developer, what happens if your second shot is from a different developer? As the pandemic reaches a really critical stage in many countries, um, in one of them, Britain, health authorities have changed some rules on how they're going to vaccinate. Um, one of them was this, that for the second shot in a two-shot regime, in some rare and exceptional circumstances, uh, for example, if the individual concerned is thought to be at immediate high risk, vaccinators will be allowed to mix and match vaccines if they don't have any more of the product from the first shot. So just to clarify, there are three candidates currently approved for use in the UK from Pfizer-BioNTech, from Moderna and from AstraZeneca. 
and they all require two shots of the same vaccine to work as well as trials demonstrated. This decision means that if someone there gets the first shot, say, of the Moderna vaccine, when they come back for the second one, they could theoretically receive one made, for example, by AstraZeneca, if the authorities have run out of the Moderna vaccine. The thing is, nobody yet knows exactly what kind of impact that could have because there have been no mix and match trials. Um, each manufacturer carried out their own trials involving only two doses of their own product. So the question of how interchangeable they are is really wide open. Um, one American professor told the New York Times that in his view, the British authorities in the current emergency were trying to guess their way out of a mess. Um, the British guidelines, however, call the move reasonable since in different ways, all three vaccines target the same area on the virus, what's called the spike protein. And experts in the UK think a second dose of any other approved vaccine would be better than no second dose at all. Um, to be honest, I don't know enough about vaccine science to make any confident predictions. And opinions among those who do know enough are divided. But I can say I think basing decisions like this on, on reasonable assumptions rather than on hard data is risky. And a lot of experts agree.